and welcome to a special bonus video I'm doing for Pikmin 2. <laughs> yep, it wasn't the end last time. There's a lot more to actually see in the game. Uh, starting with challenge mode. The the key in the Citadel spiders spider yeah, spiders unlocks this challenge mode where you basically have a set of challenges. You can do it one player, two player. I don't think I've ever played this co-op, so I'm just gonna demonstrate one because there are like 30 and it would take forever, but I'm just going to demonstrate one really fast. Basically, it's just a rush to see how much treasure you could collect, but I never play it that way. Um, what I find to be the best strategy is to go for a time bonus. As you can see in the top right corner, there is a time limit. And I find that it actually is more worthwhile to get a high time bonus than to actually collect a lot of treasure, because you're great on both. Um, he is to collect the key... Okay, that was just too ironic. The key is to collect the key in every floor, and that opens up the next area, like that. Um, you can collect more treasure to get a higher score, but again, you do get a time bonus, so I just prefer to do it this way. You can play however you want if you're playing along or whatever. Um, so you move down to this floor. Oh yeah, and... Uh, I think it's pretty obvious who has the treasure here, so I'm just gonna do this and swarm this guy. But yeah, basically challenge mode is just like a time attack kind of mode. Just to see how much treasure you can collect with the fewest Pikmin deaths and uh, the highest possible score. Uh, I played challenge mode a lot back in the day and uh, there's something else I need to go into. You do actually lose points if you lose Pikmin, so you really, really want to have a deathless run. But that is not the only benefit of a deathless run, which I'll be explaining in a bit. Okay, so the key, this is the last floor, so the key opens up a geyser, which is actually uh, closed, which is something that was seen a little bit in the main game, with like the, tr the holes actually being closed, but the, in the uh, challenge mode, the actual Geysers are closed as well. So each one is basically a repeat of an actual floor in the main game. And uh, the treasures are completely different though. They're pretty set, uh, but treasures are pretty much floor. So you can kind of get into a pattern if you play these levels enough. And so that's it for first level challenge, but it only took apparently two minutes. So let's see if I got a high score. I don't think I did. Well, second, that's not bad. Uh, I took a little longer, I think, because I was explaining stuff, but hey, save. Why not? But that's like what basic challenge mode is. You can see others have different, uh, different like sets. Like this is two floors, you don't have any bitter sprays, so only spicy sprays, and you only start with white Pikmin. This is where you have a hundred yellow Pikmin. One floor, but 50 blue Pikmin. I'm actually curious what that one is. Uh, very mixed army. So you can kind of see like just the different kinds of objectives. All these are yeah based on actual floors in the game, but uh, they are actually different. Like the treasures are completely different than what's found in the main game, and even enemies. Uh, this one is actually weird, the concrete maze, because you only have two white Pikmin and it's like a speed run to collect like the key, basically. Uh, but basically, there isn't a whole lot to challenge mode. Uh, one thing I should point out is, if you clear the stage with a Pikmin death, you get a white flower icon, but if you finish it with no Pikmin deaths, you get a pink flower icon. And you want to get all pink flowers. You actually get a bonus for doing so. In Garden, this was weird too because you only have Boltman actually. So I think you have to use Candy Papas to get other types of Pikmin to actually leave the area. I don't really remember this floor very well, but uh, I think that's like a heavy uh, snitch bug area, abduction den, that would make sense. Man at legs. Testing range. I think there's a Gatling Grank there too, so it's just a lot of artillery enemies. Emperor's Realm, it's just you basically fight like every type of ball board in the game. It's kind of like the whole of Heroes in that regard. You have purple Pikmin though, so it's not 
too horrible. This is kind of horrible. <laughs> Sniper room, again, Gallon Groinks, if I recall correctly. That's why you have yellow Pikmin and purple Pikmin. Bully Den. Two Water Race, but you have purple Pikmin, so it's actually not as horrid as it sounds. Cave of Pain, I, I don't even remember this one actually. I'm actually, okay, it's one floor. I'm just gonna do this one because I do not remember this floor at all. I just, again, just further demonstrate challenge mode. Uh, actually, I'm having a hard time seeing why this is called the Cave of Pain. It doesn't actually look that bad. But then the boulders probably get fall and bombs and that. Okay, yeah, I see what's called the Cave of Pain. I remember this area now. Um, Oh, that was lucky. But yeah, this is the kind of thing that you can expect in Challenge Mode. It's, yeah, like kind of like a remix mode. Like, I don't know, like NES Remix. <laughs> if you play that, it's sort of like that, where you have like basically new challenges and old levels. Sort of like that. That's the best comparison I can think of, at least. Um, in a level like this, it is, in my opinion, advantageous to just collect the necessities. Because frankly, this is just the worst. I mean, in terms of enemies, this is just like cruel. Uh, and I'm gonna lose Pikmin here. Actually, I think they all got out of the way in time, which is super lucky. Again, this opens up the exit, as we've seen before. It's the same cutscene as always, same text. The worst part is because the geyser, the exit geyser is actually closed, that means you actually have to navigate all the Pikmin over there. And that could be a problem. But yeah, I'm just demonstrating too, I won't go through all the challenge mode because frankly it plays out a lot like the main game at times and it would just be kind of redundant. I'm just picking a couple different challenges to go through because I don't remember certain ones. Wow, that was a good score! <laughs> Uh, apparently some- yeah, if the treasure is super close to the pod, I'd recommend collecting it, but like, going out of your way and just like destroying your time bonus really like, wouldn't be worth it. Um, this one's actually- I'm just doing this one because it's a super fun level, and by fun I mean in a really sadistic kind of way <laughs> it's a fun level. Um, because again, it's one floor and you basically have to fight two water rates. Uh, it's not exactly the easiest area to get a deathless run on, but I'm going to try it just because, again, this is just a bonus video, I'm just picking challenges to play. Uh, wow, where- oh, I think it actually drops. I don't think it's just like roaming around, I think it actually has to drop down. Which is bad. I'm actually not sure- wait, is this alright? I don't even know what's going on. I, I'm pretty sure this is the right one. But I'm not seeing anything. Of course, because I'm using an Elgato, it, the audio is kind of delayed. So, I could just be missing a humongous audio cue that will end up destroying me in a few minutes. Time actually seems slower than real time. Like, if you look at the seconds, it looks like it's going down slower than actual time. Unlike, you know, oh, there he is. Unlike, you know, what they call Nintendo seconds, or Mario seconds, that are actually faster than real time. But anyway, this is actually not that bad, as you can see. You just kind of pummel it with Purple Pikmin, call him, uh, throw and call back. But, you know, if you can destroy the roller, that's your objective number one. Destroy the roller. Uh, and then they're perfectly vulnerable from there on. So that's my recommended strategy. And an AO deal fell from the sky completely randomly. And a Wallywog. This is called the Bully Den because it's actually generally, you know, hard hitting enemies. Yeah. It's just basically, you know. Full remixes. I'm, I'm really glad you don't have to do anything like this in the main game though, because that would just be like the worst. Uh, yeah, this is actually. Yeah, I, I don't know if the, the uh, uh, enemy triggers are random or if they are actually fixed. That'd be something to look into, but I actually don't know. 
And it looks like it, I'd only have to fight one, but I could fight them all. I, I mean, them both. That was actually really good luck. To actually, you know, getting the key for his shrine. I wouldn't even, even have to fight the other one in theory. But the exit is... Uh... Uh... <laughs> I'm not seeing it anywhere. Yeah, it's hilarious how harmless these guys are considering how big of a pain in the butt they are in the main. Like, he's hired so much castle. Harvey wants to go show that off too at some point. Because you do get unique text, but I don't really want to replay that to Verge Castle over, over again. Just to show off like the 5 second text box. But yeah, uh, the computer does actually make benefits of the fact that you cannot kill it with Blue Pikmin. So yeah, uh, yeah all the treasures are though found in the main game, so nothing new. It's just like the locations are different, so... It's a nice little diversion, but yeah, you do actually unlock stuff by doing challenge mode, and I'll be getting to that after this, probably. Because, again, you get the idea by now. Um, yeah, there's not a huge amount to it, just like, four of the same after this. Just, you have to do this about 30 times. Seven floors are actually excruciatingly hard, deathless. Like, incredibly hard to do death and runs of certain levels. This one's actually not as horrible as it sounds, because if you actually have trouble with the Surveyor's Castle, then you might be thinking, oh, two water race, that's horrible. Um, but in actuality, Challenge Mode is generally not that hard, or at least I don't think it is. Uh, it's kind of trial and error sometimes, figuring out the best strat for each area, because, again, sometimes you do want to go for treasure for high score. Oh yeah, high score is completely irrelevant in terms of unlocking the bonus. It's all about Deathless. And I just ran right by the exit, didn't I? Looks like I did. Uh, it's probably here. No, there's a treasure there. I'm having such a hard time finding this. Uh, oh, there it is. See, that... Yeah, time bonus is totally wrecked for this level. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, after this, I'll show the bonus. So, I have no clue how well I did, or how badly I did. I'm, I'm guessing more the latter. Actually, I think I got a higher score than that. Oh, wow. I must have gone completely for time bonus last time. Or I just took forever to fit it. Yeah, amount earned. Yeah, I think I just went for time bonus last time. Because this is actually a repeat playthrough because uh, the first time I played Pikmin 2, I lost my save file and lost all these challenges. And uh, there's a lot of high scores that are pitifully low. But uh, returning to the high. That return to the title screen, which is funny because I've never actually shown the title screen of the game, and there are actually two Easter, three Easter eggs. If you press the left shoulder button, the Pikmin disperse like that. And if you do it enough times, something else happens. Uh, yeah, the Pikmin are forming the title screen logo, but yeah, eventually, okay, they're not doing it. But sometimes they can come back and reform the word Nintendo. If you press the right trigger, or the R button... Okay, the R button's actually what triggers it to change, I think. Uh, change it to Nintendo. And if you press the Z button... Uh, I thought that did something. Was it the X button? X, Y... Okay, it's X. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you get to control a bulb orb, and it controls, it's basically like Resident Evil tank controls. <laughs> C-stick, not control stick, C-stick. Yeah, this basically is Resident Evil controls. Uh, C actually eats. That's what I was thinking. Uh, the Pikmin, I don't think, can actually disappear. I think if the bulb orb leaves the screen, all the Pikmin will be fine. Um... I think you could also control a iridescent flit beetle as well. I forgot the button input for that. 
But anyway, this is a nice little title screen bonus. You can even control it. This is why you can't use the control stick, because you can do both at the same time. There's also a two-player mode. Basically, your goal is to take to collect four marbles or the opponent's marble of their color. But I don't have someone else to play with, so I won't be demonstrating it, obviously. High scores, we've seen that way too many Oh yeah, okay, here it is. Uh, when the flip beetle comes on screen, you can act, you can control this too. C button doesn't do anything, but uh, you can just kind of run around. It's a little nice little Easter egg that you can control the tile screen. It's it's a Nintendo game. It's not anything new. Super Mario 64, Star Fox. Okay. So the opening cinema. Uh, I kind of want to replay it, but it take forever. But there is a an interesting piece of dialogue about it. That basically, the, the, if you remember back in episode 1, or part 1, the problem of the game is that a shipment of picnic carrots gets eaten by a ravenous space bunny. Thus, because they lost the shipment, the company goes into debt, blah blah blah. Uh, so that's the catalyst. But if you complete all challenge mode deathless, and keep having the pink flower icons for everything, you unlock this bonus video of Louis Dark Secrets, so I'll show this now. So yeah, that was Louis Dark Secret, I actually turned off my mic, so that's why there was a long period of silence, but anyway, actually right now I am going to demonstrate 2 player mode, just quickly, uh, just clear out everything all at once. So this, you can use the left and right trigger to add more Pikmin, which is actually hilarious because I'm controlling, I have two controllers hooked up to my GameCube, so I could actually show this off. Um, there are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... 7, 8, 9, there are 10 arenas, I'm going to do this one because there is something special but I'm actually going to bump up the Pikmin count to 50 just to be fair, even though I'm playing both. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was running into recording problems, so that's why there's dead silence. But anyway, yeah, Louie screwed up and that's why this whole adventure happens. So those are the win conditions. You can actually get attacked by the other person's Pikmin, that's really really annoying when that happens. But yeah, you have to guard these marbles with your life, and this is why I wanted to show this area is... You can actually do something really mean if you're strategic enough. If you run to a bomb, you can pick it up. You cannot do this in single player, so... This is only multiplayer. I wish you could do this in single player, but it is only in multiplayer. But I think A tosses the bomb, but there's actually another win condition that it didn't actually say, if I recall correctly. I, or maybe just completely be remembering wrong. But I think you can actually lose by all of the Pikmin dying. But you live. Never mind. I just want to see if this actually works, but uh... Okay, so yes, if you have a Pikmin Extinction as it's called, it will also trigger a game over. Uh, it is not just collecting the marbles like the uh, instructions said. <laughs> and their faces change, all worry with that evil grin. It's just kind of hilarious actually because of how relatively expressionless he is in this game. It's more like Pikmin 1 level Olmar, because he is actually a lot more expressive, though he's not evil, unlike some people would make you believe. 
Uh, yeah, so I was just watching one Let's Play the other day where they were playing Olmar as just like an evil overlord conqueror. Conqueror, not Olmar, but their own character is like an evil overlord conqueror of the Pikmin planet. But it was, it's super hilarious actually. You can only have 50 Pikmin at a time, that's the other thing. Cause, oh, you can only have 100 Pikmin on the field at one time. And to maintain a level playing field, I'm pretty sure you cannot have more than 50 Pikmin per team. Yes. That's the Marvel. Uh, you only have red, blue Pikmin, and I don't think there's a case where their individual powers come in handy, so no team has an advantage. Uh, so the yellow marbles, if you collect four, you win. But there's also power ups, like cherries. That cherry is a power up. So I demonstrate. Uh, yeah, they get carried by really fast, so no worries. Uh, this is actually one of the worst areas to just demonstrate basic stuff. But you well, that's what shock damage looks like. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, this basically does different things. Like this effect makes my Pikmin makes the Pikmin invisible. The little ghosty icon your always health. Yeah, it means I I'm completely invisible. You just gotta run through everything. Just to demonstrate, I'm just going to try to win a match the traditional way. It's going to be hard because there are like a bazillion enemies in the way. But yeah, unlike in the main mode, you can just chuck bombs. Oh yeah, I meant to point this out uh, with one episode. I did have an example of a bulb like walking off of a platform. It was actually pretty hilarious. I wish I didn't cut the episode because... I kinda wish I could have pointed that out because it was pretty funny actually. But just completely walked off the edge. Uh, okay, so one more of these electric deals. I think this one's actually already deactivated because of the other guy. I, yeah, I'm mostly just demonstrating at this point. I'm not really, you know, because I don't have another person to actually really compete with <laughs> for obvious reasons, but. Uh, I'm just trying to quickly demonstrate. So yeah, you can only have 50 Pikmin per side. Keep things balanced. Pikmin 3's battle mode is a lot more in-depth, I think. Uh, which I've also hardly ever played. But yeah, you can collect four of the yellow marbles. That's like, that works too. But uh, I just want to speed this up. Should have basically how the power wheel works and on hidden victory condition, how you can pick up bombs and you know we won yet again. <laughs> Which is super easy, I'd win either way because I'm playing both characters. Yeah, super it's not too great. It's just a fun little bonus mode. If you had like two really like expert picking players, I could imagine it getting like super strategic. But I don't pride myself as being that good at Pikmin. Uh, I never tried to do an official speed run. Maybe I will someday because I do really like this game a lot. Um, it is one of my favorite games for the GameCube, and part of me wants to play more GameCube games, but you know, I don't know which one because I'm torn between like the Wind Waker or Super Sunshine. I didn't pick me one actually. Pick me one wouldn't be deathless because of all the crushing glitches. Like Pikmin can get crushed super easily and just die without even the ghosts flying up. So that would be super annoying. It wouldn't be a deathless run. For the sake of my sanity and having to reset everything, basically do a deathless run, I'd have to do commentary in post. Which I don't want to do because I just don't think it would work that well. But anyway, that's basically now, that's basically all there is to Pikmin 2. The only thing I haven't shown off is like the Piclopedia and like all the journal entries, but I think those are actually better to discover for yourself if you want to play the game eventually. So I'm going to leave that for now and we're going to call it here. So next time, we will be starting a new game and I don't know what that game is. I'm torn between like three games, but I it'll be good, hopefully. So see you guys then.